stated that we are what we repeatedly do. So excellence, therefore, is not an act, but it's a habit. And our character is actually a component of our habits. So what are habits? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Specifically, we're going to define what habits are, and we're going to talk about the three components of habits. Welcome to Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. This is where we're doing five-minute exercises, one each for the mind, the body, and the soul. And I'm Pia McAdams. I'm an author, and I'm also an accounting professor and a certified life coach. I specialize in personal and small business finance and also fitness. I help people reach their goals. So habits, that's what we're going to be talking about. So what are habits? Now, in this mind section, we're reading, I should start off by telling you what we're talking about, right? From the mind section. We're reading from or discussing from the book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Stephen Covey. Okay, and we've been doing this all month and we're, we're still, we still got a few more days left into this book. And guess what? We haven't even talked about the actual habits yet. We're kind of laying the foundation, but now we're getting close. You can tell because now we're talking about habits and how they're defined. So how does Dr. Stephen Covey define habits? Well, he says that habits are the intersections of the knowledge, your skills, and your desire. Okay, I'll say it again. The definition of habits, according to Dr. Stephen Covey, is the intersection of your knowledge, your skills, and then also your, um, your, your desire. Did I say habits or desire last time? Let me do it again, just for more, <laughs> third time is a good measure, right? So, your, um, Dr. Stephen Covey defines habits as the intersection between your knowledge, your skills, and your desire. Okay, so knowledge, skills, and desire. That's what habits are composed of. All right, and these are actually deep rooted and um, actually in our subconscious. Often they're time they're in our subconscious and they um, result in actually actions or lack thereof. All right, so you may be asking yourself, what are we talking about? Well, let me give you an example. Has there ever been a time where you experienced where you got in your car, you know, let's say you're, you know, you're on your way, work is over with and you're, you know, getting ready to drive home. So you put your keys in your car and then the next thing you know, you're at home, like you have no recollection of how you got there, but you're at home. Well, that's because your subconscious kicked in, that habit, that mechanism, also known as the autopilot, kind of kicked in and got you home because you've been doing driving home for so long that it's already ingrained in you, it's a habit, All right? So that would be an example of a, of a habit. Now, understand this. Now, habits actually define our, our character. Habits also express our character. And the habits determine our level of effectiveness and ineffectiveness. So you may be wondering, well, what are the three components of habits? Well, they are the knowledge, the skills, and the desire. So let's start off with the knowledge. What is knowledge? Well, knowledge is the what to do, you know, the why. Skills, skills are the how to do. And then desire, desire is the want to do, you know, the motivation. All right, so let me give you an example. So let's say that you're ineffective with your interactions um, with your spouse, with your children, and with your work associates because you're always telling them what to do, but you never listen to what they want, you know, listen to them. Now, unless you actually um, search out the correct principles of human interactions, you may not know that you need to listen. And even if you do know that, you know, even if let's say that you even know that in order to have an <clears throat> effective um, interactions with humans, you have to listen to them, right? <clears throat> Hold on, give me a second. <clears throat> I'm sorry. All right, so even if you do know that in order to have the effective community um, interactions with humans, you have to be able to listen to them, you may not have the skill. You may not know how to do it, right? All right, but even if you know that you need to listen to people, and even if you know how to listen to people, unless you want to, Unless you have the desire to listen to people, guess what? It's not going to be a habit in your life. So that's why Dr. Stephen Covey mentions that, and I know it's backwards, but follow along with me. I'm going to follow it with you. That habit is actually the intersection between the knowledge, the skills, and the desire. Again, the knowledge is the what to do, the why. The skills is the how to do. And then, of course, we have the desire, which is the, um, which is the want to do. All right, so can you see this? All right, now... All of this requires change. <laughs> Whoa, that lowered again. Yes, change. It requires change. And change is hard. Change is a painful, slow process. And this is something that we just, we, we have, we, we, we just don't want to do it, right? We just, we just, we're adverse to change for whatever reason. But because you're my listeners, I know you're open-minded and you understand that in order to get what you want, 
you're going to have to have change. It's going to require change. Remember the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Okay. So if you want to have change in your life, guess what? You have to change your life. So what is it that we're actually talking about? I want to give you another diagram. Now this one right here is actually a diagram. Again, I know it's backwards, but just follow along with me. So this is a diagram of your mind. So when you picture your mind, I want you to picture this top part right here, like picture this as your mind. Your mind is composed of two parts. We have the conscious part, which is the top part. This is also known as our thinking mind. This is where thoughts are processed right here in this top portion. And then we have the bottom portion, which is known as our subconscious mind. This is our emotional mind. This is our feelings. And this is where our habits and our beliefs are actually instilled right here. And as you can see from the picture, like this is our body, like arms and legs. All right. So your habits and your beliefs are here and it's going to result in your actions or lack thereof or your results. So you may be asking, well, where did they come from? Well, we've talked about it, but just to review and to give you another visual, when we were young, before we even developed a conscious brain, we actually had, was only had a subconscious brain. And so we were fed into things like this would be like from our parents, this could be from school, this could be from church, you know, you have friends, you have associates, you have an environment, all of those fed into um, culmination of our habits and our belief. So there are some of us that are actually walking around, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old that have, ha that have habits that we've had for a long period of time. Now, the good thing about these habits are that the habits, you know, may seem like I'm talking about good or bad, but it's never about good or bad when it comes to habits. It really is about habits that serve you and habits that don't serve you. So if you've been carrying around habits for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, however old you are years, and these are habits that serve you, then by all means, they serve you, continue to let them serve you. But if at this point you decide that you no longer, or those habits no longer serve you, guess what? You can change those. All right. So that's the change that we're talking about. And this is the different approach. This is the inside out approach that I've been referring to for forever now. Right. Or it seems like at least to me. So this is the inside out approach that I'm talking about. The one that you go internal to figure out what's going on with you, you know, getting to know yourself, getting to know your habits, getting to assess those habits to see if they're serving you or not. And guess what? Even if it's something that you've believed, if it's a habit you've held, a value that you've held for 30, 40, 50 years, you can all of a sudden wake up today and decide, you know what, that's no longer serving me and I'm going to replace it with something that does. And it's okay. It's your choice. All right. So to leave you with this, I want you to understand this. You sow a thought, you reap an action. You sow an action, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap character. You sow character, you reap destiny. The destiny to be who or what you want to be. All right, so hopefully that served you today. Not as a habit, but as a thought. So now we're going to this transfer in your life in 15 minutes. We're going to move on to the body portion. And in the body portion, we're going to do a five-minute um, yoga routine. And then immediately following that, sorry, I put my glasses up. I'm trying to do two things at once here. And then immediately following that, we're going to move on to a guided, my five-minute guided meditation. Hi guys, how are you guys doing this morning? This is a glorious day to be up and alive. Be grateful to be here, and thank you so much for watching. And even those of you that are watching um, the recording, I want to thank you. Maybe it's not morning where you are, maybe evening or whatever. But I want to thank you for taking the time to to watch this. Uh, Live broadcast of Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. Remember, the basis of is this. We're just doing little small minute, uh, small exercises, each designed to um, elicit change and transformation. And how we're doing that is just five-minute exercises, one each for the mind, the body, and the soul. And then remember, over time, oh my gosh, this, so I bought, <laughs> this is a random, like a random thought. Remember random thought action? Uh, I bought a cantaloupe yesterday and it was been out and it, like my house smells like cantaloupe. So I come in here, I smell cantaloupe. But anyway, so these are like just small five minute exercises, one each for the mind, the body and soul. And over time, you're going to find out that, you know, you're going to transform yourself. And how you're going to do it is one, this is just like a little tiny bite, right? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. These are little bite sized exercises, but it's my hope that it culminates into you going out and doing more exercises. But if you only have time, five minutes is enough. And also guys, get that book, Dr. Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. 
I know you say, Pia, I'm so busy, I don't have time to read. What have you been? What have we talked about? Busyness and all of that. We've talked about all that, right? You can, you have the time to do what you want to do. You have the money to do what you want to do. You really do. But remember, whether you think you do or you think you don't, then you're right either way. All right. So I get it. I get it. But guess what? It's on, it's a book. It's a physical book. I actually have, I had the physical book, but I gave it away. I have it on Kindle and guess what? There's also audio. I also have it on audio. So if you're saying, oh, I don't have time to read. I don't have, or I don't, uh, that's, that's correct that statement. You don't want to make time to read. That's okay. Listen to the audio. You're driving. What is it that you're listening to? The news? Why are you listening to the news? How is that serving you? It's only being negative. It's getting you upset, fearful, frustrated. You know, why? Listen to something positive, something that's going to uplift you. So when you're driving, you know, pop in this book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, because guess what? We have about 10 more days that we're going to cover this book, and then we're going to move on um, to um, another book. But uh, enough about that, right? I'm talking, rambling. Okay, so let's go on to the yoga. Uh, for the yoga, let's get into Tadasana, which is the mountain pose. Uh, we're going to start off in the standing position. So make sure that your feet are together or slightly, um, or hip distance apart, or slightly apart, whatever feels comfortable to you so that you feel grounded. For me, I'm knock knee, so I don't. I rarely stand with my feet together. I usually stand with them about hip distance apart. Uh, but anyway, uh, make sure that your shoulders are drawn down and back. Your head is a natural extension of your spine. Go ahead and put your arms down by your side. Take a couple deep breaths there, and then I want you to kind of, um, you know, do that right now. And as I'm getting this music together, and then I want you to bring your your palms together at the heart center, and then just really ground yourself. Just kind of close your eyes, give a couple more breaths in um, into the asana and mountain pose, and just kind of give gratitude, you know, for being alive, for being, you know, up. Give gratitude for this moment. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and bring your palms together at the heart center. Relax your shoulders. Again, just kind of give nice deep ujjayi breaths. Give gratitude. Being thankful. Friends, family, being here, being alive. Being able to experience this glorious day. And really take your time. Don't rush it. Just ground yourself. Pretend like there's the root that's flowing from the bottom of your feet all the way down to Middle Earth. Just go internal, see how you feel inside. Just kind of make an initial assessment. Any lingering thoughts from last night? Hopefully they're positive, but if not, then go ahead and dispel those negativity, those negative thoughts from you. All right, let's go ahead and take your arms down by the sides. Take a deep breath, drawing them in as the arms go up overhead. And as we exhale, we're going to dive the body forward. Take your time. Fingertips go down toward the mat. As we inhale, we're going to look up halfway. Flatten out the back. Tailbone sticks out toward the back of the room. As you exhale, forward fold. In Tadasana. And I want you to slowly round it up. One vertebra at a time. Making sure that your head is last to rise. Go ahead and rotate your shoulders down and back. Let's do that again. Nice deep breath. Inhaling. And as you exhale, dive the body forward. Take your time using your breath. Inhale, look up halfway. Flatten out the back. Exhale, the Uttanasana. Forward fold. And then slowly roll it up one vertebrae at a time. Again, in the morning, I kind of like to do things with movement. And then just going for how I feel. So a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Forward fold. Inhale. Look up halfway. Exhale. Forward fold. This time we're going to walk our fingertips out to the plate. And we're going to exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale.
exhale with a downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. And exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale to downward facing dog. Come up on the fingertips. Walk them back to your toes. Inhale, look up halfway. Uttanasana as you exhale. This time we're going to dive the body up as we inhale. Exhale, dive the body forward. Look up halfway. Flatten out the back. Forward fold. Inchworm out to the plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Come up on the fingertips. Take it back. Fingertips towards the toes. Look up halfway as you inhale. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, take it all the way up. This time, kind of arch back for me. Exhale, dive the body forward. Look up halfway. Exhale, the Uttanasana. Inchworm out to the plank. And let's hold the plank. Nice, deep, huge eye breaths. Give me two breaths here. On the next exhale, exhale, release your knee, chest, chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana. And then inhale to upper facing dog. Relax the shoulders here, soft elbow if you need to. Curl the toes under, and exhale to downward facing dog. Now go ahead and pedal your legs. Again, using your breath. Really internal, if there's any tight areas, tension, stress, negativity, go ahead and make an assessment now and then use your breath to spell those out of your mind, out of your body, out of your soul. Come up on the top of your toes, go down to the balls of your feet, all the way down toward the heels. Let's do that again. Come up on the top of your toes. This time let's lean over to, let's do it to the right side, bending that right knee. Love the stretch, especially very early in the morning. All right. And then release down. Drop the knees down toward the mat and extend the arms all or your legs all the way back. Let's do that again. Bend the knees down toward the mat. And extend the legs. All right, let's come up on our fingertips and walk it back to your toes. Look up halfway, flatten out the back, really stick out the tailbone. Uttanasana, and the exhale. Inhale, take it all the way up, arch back. Exhale, dive the body forward. Look up halfway. Forward fold, and inch firm to the plank. Hold the plank, two deep breaths. And on your next exhale, release your knee, chest, chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, relax the shoulders, release them away from your ears, and curl the toes under the downward facing dog. Start the pedal. Come up on the toes. And roll down to the balls of your feet all the way down toward the heels. Let's do it again. Come up on the toes. This time we're going to lean over to the opposite side, bending that same knee. Nice deep stretch. Return back to the center. Take it all the way down. 
Bring the knees down toward the mat and extend the legs. One more time, bring the knees down toward the mat and extend the legs. Coming up on your fingertips, walk them all the way back to your toes. Look up halfway. And forward fold just a little deeper if you can. Inhale, take it all the way up. Arch back. Exhale, dive the body forward. Again, look up halfway. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Inchworm out to the plank. Release your knee, chest, chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to upward facing dog. Curl the toes under. Exhale to downward facing dog. Bring that right knee into your chest and extend that right leg all the way back. Bend the knee, open up the hip. Now go ahead and straighten out that leg. And then bring that right foot forward towards your fingertips. Let's take it up to Virabhadrasana 1 or Warrior 1. Drop your hips down toward the mat. Now the arch of your right heel is bisecting the um, arch of your back left leg. Your hips are facing forward. There's a bend, press, bend your knee, draw your hips straight down, extend the arms overhead. Relax those shoulders, continue to breathe. All right, go ahead and straighten out the legs. Let's take the arms behind. Let's go ahead and put them on the small of our back and dive the body forward into pyramid. You may want to step it in just a little bit, depending on the flexibility in those hamstrings. Again, micro knee, lift the kneecap to engage the quadriceps and give a deeper stretch in those hamstrings. Now go ahead and release the fingertips down toward the mat. A deeper fold here in this pyramid. Try to keep your hips centered. Relax those shoulders. Now go ahead and bend the knee, place the palms flat, take it back to the plank, release your knee, chest, chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to upward facing dog, curl the toes under, and exhale to downward facing dog. Couple deep breaths here. Go ahead and pedal if you like. Just sway your body side to side. All right, bring that opposite knee in towards your chest and extend that leg all the way back. And then bend the knee to open up the hip. And then go ahead and extend that leg and then bring the left foot toward the fingertips. And let's take it up to Virabhadrasana. Now as I'm bringing my leg up, I'm rotating my hip. I drop my right heel down at an angle and again, this left Heel is dissecting the arch of my right foot. Rotate your hips to the front, drop it down, bend the knee, arms go up overhead, head stays in alignment with your bicep. If this is too much strain or stress, always remember, you can always bring your hands together at heart center. Nice deep Ujjayi breaths. Go ahead and straighten out the leg. Exhale, dive forward into pyramid and then release the fingertips down toward the mat continue to breathe go ahead and bend the knee flatten out the arms take it back to the plank knee chest chin chaturanga nandasana inhale exhale our Pamakasa Vasana, downward facing dog. Now from here, <laughs> we're gonna walk our toes in toward our palms. Soft knees, if you need to. And then let's go ahead and clasp our elbows with our fingers. Let the crown of your head naturally bring your body weight forward. And we're just gonna forward fold here in Uttanasana. Give me a nice deep breath here. And as you exhale, 
Go ahead and reach your fingertips down to the mat. Give a deeper fold if you can. And then slowly round it up. Again, taking it one vertebrae at a time. Making sure that your head is the last to rise. Come through Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, guide the body forward. Place your palms down flat and walk your feet out toward the edges of the mat. And as you exhale, release your tailbone down towards the mat. Using your elbows to push out on those inner thighs. Bring the palms together at the heart center and just kind of bow your head. Again, this is where you're going to give gratitude, set your intentions for the day. You can set your intentions for the next section, which is the meditation. Just whatever you feel like doing, you may just want to breathe. All right, go ahead and reach your palms down to the mat, and then slowly start to transition your body weight to a comfortable seated position, facing forward. And making sure that you're off the fleshy, or you're on your sits bones and off the fleshy part of your bottom. You're sitting up nice and tall and fingertips down towards the mat. We're going to take a nice deep breath. As we inhale, take the arms up overhead. And as we exhale, release the fingertips down towards the mat. Again, nice deep breath. Inhaling. And exhaling. One more time, nice deep breath, inhaling. This time we're going to bring the palms together at the very top. Exhale down through the center, bringing your hands and palms to heart center. And namaste. All right, so this brings us to the meditation portion. Kind of get comfortable in the seated position. If you're just joining us, or if you're sitting in a chair, we're going to get a chair. Make sure that your shoes are off. Make sure that your feet are planted firmly against the floor. And always start off nice, being nice and grounded. And then again, just kind of go internal using your breath. Just getting a feel of where your body is now, particularly if you just finished doing yoga. You may be a little tense. You may be relaxed, just depending on how you feel. And I won't make any judgments. Just note how you're feeling. All right, and I invite you to take another deep breath, inhaling. And then this time as you exhale, I want you to close your eyes and just slowly drop your chin down toward your chest. Now as you inhale, I want you to lift your head. Forehead goes all the way up to the sky. And as you exhale, release your chin down toward your chest. Again, as you inhale, your head and chest go all the way up. Relax those shoulders down, sitting up nice and tall. And as you exhale, release the chin down toward your chest. One more time, take a nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose. And this time as you exhale, I want you to bring your head forward so it's a natural extension of your spine. Keep your eyes closed and just give me a couple of deep ujjayi breaths in this position. Preparing your body, getting ready to relax. If there's any thoughts that are going around in your mind, just gently push them aside and just really just focus on your breath, just focus on your breathing. You know, a lot of times we think we don't know how to meditate or we're not patient with ourselves. But remember, meditation is a practice. I want you to be patient with yourself. Just continue breathing, relaxing. You're doing it. All right, let's go ahead and draw your attention to your toes. I want you to squish them up really, really tight as you inhale. And then as you exhale, I want you to release them. Now draw your attention to your ankle and release. Remember, always release as you exhale. And 
and now your calf muscles. Your kneecaps. Your thigh muscles. Your buttocks. Now your pelvic area. As you draw your next breath in, focus on your back, any tension, stress, strain that you may be carrying there. Now your shoulders, go ahead and hunch your shoulders all the way up towards your ears. And then release. Now your neck and your jaw. And your face muscles. And then finally your forehead. Remember, if there's any lingering thoughts, just gently push them aside. Just focus on your breath. You're doing good. Now go ahead and hunch your shoulders one more time. And then finally release any remaining tension, stress, negativity that you may be holding, just release it out of your body. Good. Now just sit with this for a moment, just breathe and enjoy the relaxation. Now go ahead and take a nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Again, deep breath, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. One more time, take a nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Now go ahead and open up your eyes as you release, relax, return to refreshed and calm. You've done something good for yourself today. I want to thank you for taking the time to meditate with me. Thank you for taking the time to do the yoga and also to listen to me doing talking about the seven habits of highly effective people. Your word for today is heavenly. I want you to have a heavenly day. Now I will see you again the same time tomorrow. Bye.